international rules. You have, and I may, I may be short on that. Uh, I have also written text that I can transfer uh, afterwards if you wish. Uh, in fact, uh, as far as I know, but maybe you know that much better than I do, uh, you have three texts to play the role at the international level. You have the uh, Beijing Rules of 1985, adopted by the United Nations, Standard Minimum Rules for the Administration of Juvenile Justice. And that text recommends that juvenile criminal law uh, should be adopted as far as possible uh, for young adult offenders, uh, that's rule 3.3. Three, three. The idea is that uh, the juvenile criminal law has a more educational, rehabilitative character and rule 3.3 three suggests that such rules should be extended as much as possible to young adult offenders. You have a recommendation of the Council of Europe 2003, uh, which consider in its point 11 that, I quote, reflecting the extended transition to adulthood, it should be possible for young adults under the age of 21 to be treated in a way comparable to juveniles and to be subject to the same intervention when the judge is of the opinion that they, that those young adults, are not as mature and responsible for their action as full adults. So the idea is here is that there would be an extension of the juvenile criminal law to young adults in function of their lack of maturity uh, and responsibility. 2008, a uh, new recommendation of the Council of uh, Europe and uh, point 17 states that young adult offenders may, where appropriate, be regarded as juveniles and dealt with accordingly. Same ID. So, uh, with those texts, we see on the international uh, level. Uh, certainly a tendency to encourage the uh, states uh, to extend the scope of juvenile criminal law to young adults. Although those recommendations, those texts are not binding, they have an impact. They have an impact and in recent years uh, what we state is that several countries have adopted specific rules for young adult offenders. Uh, in a paper published in 2015, Prime and Dunkel, two German uh, scholars, uh, could identify three types of specific criminal justice treatment of young adults in uh, Europe. First option, you have some countries who makes it possible to extend the juvenile criminal law to young adults, either uh, material or procedural. Mm -hmm. You have always both possibilities to have an action on the substantial law aspect or on the procedural law uh, aspect, uh, sometimes on the both sides, and this possibly under certain conditions. Second kind of situation, uh, you have other countries uh, who foresee the possible application of mitigating circumstances for young adults or uh, the benefit of separate procedural rules within the adult criminal law system. So, second option, those young adults stay in the criminal law system for adults, but they benefit from mitigating circumstances or uh, they see uh, different specific uh, procedural rules applied, a uh, specific trajectory uh, on the procedural uh, aspect. And third kind of situation, you have countries that, that do not provide any specific provision for young adults, so nothing specific in text, but 
uh, countries where in practice judges may informally, on an informal way, take into account the young age of the adult uh, in order to uh, adapt the system, in order to adapt the uh, judicial answer, to adapt the uh, sentence. So three uh, main options, possibilities that are used in uh, different European countries and that was the statement uh, done by Prime and Dunkel uh, on the base of uh, literature studies they made in 2050. I try to uh, come back now on that statement, on those statements on the base of a recent comparative law research conducted in the Netherlands uh, and published last year, uh, 2019, in Dutch. So uh, that's a bit of luck for me and for you as uh, I speak uh, and read Dutch so I could use that uh, report which is just fresh uh, I can transfer it to you also. There is a little summary in English, uh, but I think that uh, it's uh, indeed uh, interesting as they dress a map of the different uh, system used in uh, 46 countries of the uh, Council of Europe. They worked, they made a comparative uh, overview of the existing system in 46 uh, countries of the uh, Council of Europe, uh, 46 and not 50, because that's what they say, they had no information about for country, uh, Malta, and so for little country in Europe, they, they had no information about that. Um, the base of that research, uh, the research followed the adoption in the Netherlands uh, in 2014 of a specific act named the Adolescent Criminal Law, Adolescent Criminal Law Act and the goal of that new Adolescent Criminal Law Act uh, passed on 1st April 2014, the goal was uh, I quote, to stimulate the flexible application of juvenile and adult penal law in criminal cases. To stimulate the flexible application of juvenile and adult criminal law in criminal cases against individuals from 16 up to 30, uh, 23 against individuals from 16 up to 23 years old, uh, even if the age of the full penal responsibility is usually fixed at 18. Uh, but it's not everywhere the case, and as far as I'm well informed, in Portugal, for instance, it is 16. No? 16, it's 16. 16. It's 16. So over 16. Yeah. One and so year, 21. Yeah. Portugal is one of the exception to that general rule uh, of the age of majority in the majority, which is normally in most of the country, uh, 80. So um, in fact, uh, it seemed that. Uh, the uh, ACL distinct approach, the adolescent criminal law uh, distinct approach that they uh, implemented in the Netherlands concerns mostly the extension of juvenile law on young adults age uh, from 18 to 22. And justification for such an extension of the juvenile uh, law to uh, young adults age 18 to 22 uh, is twofold. So two arguments used to justify that extension of a juvenile criminal law. First, a statement issued from uh, the behavioral sciences Statement according to which the functions and regions of the brain, of the brain, I'm 
understood the introduction here. Uh, first uh, statement is uh, that the evolution of the brain uh, responsible for behavior at risk is still ongoing. So you have a kind of uh, scientific uh, uh, argumentation saying behavioral sciences tell us that the function and the region of the brain responsible for behaviors at risk are still developing and this justifies a separate treatment. And second argument for young adults who, whose development is not achieved the educational or resocializing dimension of juvenile justice would be more effective, would be more efficient in preventing recidivism than the uh, classical retributive criminal law for adults. So just a short comment here, uh, what struck me when I uh, read those two arguments uh, is that we see with the first argument the penetration of the return of a biological argument in the explanation of crime or antisocial behavior. Uh, here it is going in a way which is benevolent for the a juvenile, but still it's syndicating, uh, that's more criminological reflection, it's indicating of a change which is coming uh, and indicating of uh, a return of biological explanation <coughs> in uh, biological arguments in the explanation of uh, anti, so-called antisocial behavior. And the second element uh, which struck me is that such a benevolent system is not grounded on welfare goals, education, resocialization, but on a more efficient prevention of recidivism. Of course, you could say that both issues are connected, but still, it is also indicative of the transformation. Uh, of a welfare approach towards a more risk reduction um, project that is probably one of the main uh, trends that we face in uh, penal justice uh, today. So stating that such a distinct approach to young adults not only exists in the Netherlands uh, but also in other countries, uh, the research proposed a comparative view of the different uh, distinct regimes existing in uh, 46 member countries of the Council of Europe. And what I will then do uh, now is to present a few key elements of their uh, research and of what they could identify as uh, system and criteria uh, adopted in those different countries to uh, favor uh, such a distinct approach. So a few statements that they uh, made about those distinct uh, approach uh, reserved to young adult offender. First statement, um, on the 46 countries analyzed, 34 have a distinct approach towards young adults older than 18 at the time at the offense. 18, 18 years old <coughs> being generally, but not exclusively, the reference for the penal demarcation between childhood and adulthood. So, in <coughs> 34 countries on the 46, you have that idea of a specific, distinct uh, approach. In the two, in the 12 other countries, there is no specific, distinct approach for young adults. Formally, once they are adults, they are adults and they come under the regime 
of the criminal uh, justice system for adults uh, under the criminal law for adults. Still, still, a double nuance has to be made. In some of those 12 countries, juvenile criminal law can be applied to young adults older than 18 years old if they were under 18 at the moment where they committed the act. So they accept to prolong uh, the uh, juvenile criminal law after 18 years old if they committed the act before 18 years old. And the second element, in some of those countries, the age of the young adolescent may um, informally function as a mitigating circumstance and produce a social sentence. So here again, in those 12 countries, what seems to happen is that even if the text don't provide anything, it may happen that the judge take into account the young age of the adult has a mitigating circumstance and to lower the sentence that would be, for instance, the case in Belgium. In Belgium, there is no distinct approach. Once you are 18 years old, you are sent to the adult criminal justice. But indeed, uh, a lawyer, a good lawyer, will probably plead the young age of the offender to uh, get uh, uh, to, to have some mitigating circumstances and to have a softer sentence. Criteria for a distinct approach. So you have the first uh, criterion, general uh, criterion, uh, it is the age, the question of the age. So in most countries, the minimum age of young adulthood is 18 years old, except uh, Portugal and also Scotland, who both have a minimum age of 16. In most countries, the maximum age of young adulthood, the maximum age uh, of young adulthood uh, benefiting of a distinct approach is in general 21 years old. But here again, in function of the countries, you have exceptions. Uh, it is, for example, 20 years old in Bulgaria, uh, 23 in the Netherlands, 25 uh, in Malta. So, there are also evolutions and distinctions. In most countries, the age concerns the age at the moment of the offense. It is generally uh, the criteria. But in some countries, and the report quotes Serbia and Slovenia, it concerns the age at the moment of the trial. And this is of course something important. It has an impact uh, and this has a consequence in those two countries, for instance, that a long and slow process can counter the use of uh, such a distinct approach. So that's the first criteria, the question of minimum age and maximum age, usually uh, 18, uh, 21, but sometimes 16, sometimes uh, uh, 23 or 25 at the other side. There are very often additional conditions, additional conditions necessary to uh, submit the young adult to such a distinct uh, approach. In some countries, the distinct approach is provided by law under no other condition than the age of the young offender. It should be the case, for example, in Austria. It's just a question of the age uh, that is important, is pertinent, relevant, no other condition are provided by the law. But in other countries you have additional criteria uh, that have to be met, that have to be met in order to make the distinct approach uh, applicable, possible 
for a young adult offender. A first additional very common condition is the individual characteristic of the young adult suspect. In the Netherlands, for instance, but it seems to be the case also in Germany or in England, uh, the personality of the offender, its immaturity or unfinished development is an additional criterion that has to be uh, justified by the judge to recourse to the distinct approach. The circumstances of the crime may be a second criterion, inasmuch as those circumstances uh, reflect the immaturity of the offender. So just an example, in Germany, it seems that perpetrators of what they call spontaneous acts are eligible for the distinct approach as far as such spontaneous acts are supposed to be the symptom of an immature personality. So if you are in the good age uh, schedule and that you uh, make a spontaneous act, it means that you are immature and that the distinct approach can be applied. First uh, criterion sometimes used, the expected efficiency of a distinct approach. Uh, and the idea is here uh, that the educational juvenile criminal law uh, is supposed to be more efficient in terms of social reintegration or in terms of uh, recidivism prevention than the uh, criminal law system in the case to be judge. So the expected efficiency of the juvenile answer uh, has to be shown uh, in advance to justify the recourse to that uh, distinct approach. And uh, last criterion uh, which is sometimes also met, the severity of the punishment provided by law for the offense. Uh, and uh, sometimes if the young adult has committed an act which is punished formally in the law, in the books, by a very severe punishment, it means that that distinct approach won't be uh, possibly applied because the gravity of the act is uh, something that opposes the recourse to the distinct approach. So, to sum up, uh, what, what we can state here is that the age criterion may, uh, is of course uh, very important and the age criterion may increase or decrease the size of the young adult group concerned by that distinct approach and uh, we said also that uh, there are other additional criteria uh, that were existing rather have the effect of restricting the number of young adults eligible for a distinct approach. The impact of the uh, distinct approach towards the uh, young adults when uh, used. The way the way uh, that distinct approach is organized differs between countries. Uh, it is uh, always the case. Uh, still, it seems uh, it is what the research did. It is possible to identify four kinds four kind of uh, specificities uh, of uh, such distinct approach. Uh, Three first, uh, three first, uh, three first principal elements, which are of uh, substantial, uh, substantial impact: a separate placement, the mitigation of the penal sanction, 
the use of the recourse to other sanctions than the adult sanctions, and then you have a fourth uh, possible specificity, which is from procedural uh, sort, and uh, it is the application of distinct, uh, distinct uh, justicial uh, procedure. So a few words on uh, around those four kinds of characteristic of a, a distinct approach uh, and of course you have in function of the countries the use of one of them or from a mix of use of different ones of them so every country has its own uh, system about that but usually it goes around those four kinds of uh, possibilities separate placement in 24 countries the law provides that uh, uh, a placement measure or penalty, uh, if decided by the judge, may or will be executed in a separate place, a separate youth detention center, a separate detention center, or a separate wing of a general detention center. So three kinds of uh, options that seems uh, used in uh, those different countries. In some countries such a separate placement is compulsory until a certain age. This seems to be the case in Denmark, Poland, Spain, uh, they quote Portugal also. Uh, whereas in other countries, such a separate placement stays an option at the discretion of the judge. England, Finland, Austria, no obligation but an option at the discretion of the judge. The goals of such a separate detention are uh, obvious, three main goals to provide young adults with more educational opportunities than it would be the case in an adult detention centre, to offer them more reintegrative perspectives and to isolate the young adult from uh, an adult contamination. This is quite uh, classical uh, but is obviously really often used as justification by the legislator in those different countries. Second uh, possible option, a mitigation of the penal sanction. So, other possible consequence of the district approach, the mitigation of the penalty which is normally uh, foreseen uh, for the penal act, uh, such mitigation of sentence is noticeable in uh, 25 countries. So, uh, an important number of countries who use that uh, possibility. But here again, of course, with differences, with differences uh, that are noticeable. So, in some uh, countries, the mitigating of the sentence is provided by law and is compulsory. Uh, law may stipulate, for example, that a specific penalty shall not apply to a young adult. So in Bulgaria, uh, life detention uh, cannot be applied to a young adult. Sometimes uh, uh, you have law who provide that young adult will suffer only the one-third of the adult sentence. Uh, it would be the case in Moldavia. Or uh, the law can also sometimes provide that the young adult will benefit from a general youth reduction, a kind of general uh, mitigating circumstances, and that would be the case in uh, Sweden. And you have uh, fourth example uh, which is given in the report, uh, it is Austria who uh, provides the, 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 the option uh, to make the journey to get parole more flexible. 
So it is uh, the stage of the uh, penal, uh, the execution of the same sentence that you have an impact on the tra trajectory of the young adult. In other countries, the mitigating of the sentence is provided by law, but not compulsory. Hmm? Uh, it stays an option at the discretion of the judges. So that's probably one of the main uh, difference, generally speaking, between the countries. All those possibilities are sometimes provided by law and compulsory, and sometimes they are provided by law, but has an option. Uh, to uh, the discretion of the judge. Uh, mitigation of sentence may be very specific and limited to a specific penalty. Uh, I gave an example uh, a few moments uh, uh, ago. Uh, what's interesting to see is maybe the, the huge difference that can exist uh, between the countries, the choice of the penalty or uh, in the choice of the act. For example, in Germany, uh, the mitigation is only foreseen for a life sentence. You have there a reduction for, uh, the, uh, for the young adult, but it's only for the life sentence. And uh, in the country, in Italy, mitigation may only be considered for minor offenses, for petty delinquents. So, two totally different options between the two uh, countries. Um, and finally, uh, it must be also stressed that mitigation of penalty uh, is still possible for your adults in countries where no distinct approach exists, uh, but where the judge can informally, I quoted the example of Belgium, few months ago where the judge can also uh, uh, choose uh, the young age has a mitigating circumstance. The recourse to other sanction than the adult sanction, that's also an option that exists in different countries, following the report 15 countries of the Council of Europe uh, provide uh, uh, sanctions issued from the juvenile criminal law uh, and that may be applied to young adults should be the case in the Netherlands, in Germany, so Vienna, Slovenia and other countries uh, and they state also that in most of the countries the imposition of a juvenile criminal law sanction requires other conditions uh, than uh, the age uh, personality or immaturity of the offender or the supposed efficiency of an educational response, the nature of the crime are different elements that uh, are provided by law to uh, allow the recourse to that kind of uh, juvenile uh, sanctions. Sometimes also the need of an expert report attesting that the young adult uh, is in its development equivalent to a juvenile, so the immaturity has to be shown, proved by uh, uh, an expert report. And then, fourth element, the application of a distinct justice procedure. Uh, in seven countries, the distinct approach has that kind of procedural aspect. Uh, in some of uh, those countries, uh, Germany, Croatia, Austria, Serbia, young adults are normally brought back to the juvenile tribunal and subject to the uh, juvenile justice system procedures. So the general rule in those countries is to apply the juvenile justice system to the young uh, adult. But with specific uh, condition and also with the uh, possibility for the judge to eventually impose sanctions from the adult criminal law. So first kind of option, those young adults are judged following the juvenile justice system but with the possibility for the judge to use adult penal sanctions. 
And then you have uh, a second option in other countries. The general rule is uh, to keep the young adult offenders into the adult procedural system, but with some exceptions, with some exception that, uh, may, be, that may be made in a specific situation where the procedural rules of the juvenile justice system may be used, and that should be the case in the Netherlands. Three short reflections in terms of conclusion. Um, first conclusion, most of the countries consider young adults as a specific target group that deserve a distinct approach. That's ob obviously a growing movement in uh, the Council of Europe countries those, uh, those last year and a distinct approach which uh, borrow elements from the juvenile justice system and from the adult system with uh, interconnected uh, relations that are specific to uh, each country. Could be interesting to see if you have two countries in the 46 who have the same system. Probably not. Second, uh, second uh, point of conclusion: the diversity. It's a bit what I just said. The diversity in the implementation of those distinct approaches is very important. Uh, the general landscape. Uh, don't propose a uniform model, but a rather a mosaic of diverse combinations. And third, uh, as far as that report is well informed, there is no real information on the practices, on the practices, and uh, this means that uh, your kind of research. Uh, as you will do empirical research, if I understood well what you told me, uh, that empirical research and comparative empirical research uh, should be uh, very interesting in order to evaluate the effectiveness of such a third way for young adults and its impact on the further trajectory of the young adult in terms of resistance. So probably two main uh, interesting issues uh, of research here. Third, practices. What are doing the judges? Uh, as we see that in a different country, the system provided by law is not compulsory, but propose options to the judges. So what, what are they doing? Uh, and how are they doing in function, for example, of a specific procedural uh, system? Um, that's one important uh, aspect. And the second one is, of course, the impact of such a distinct approach on the further trajectory of the, uh, of the young adult uh, years later. What happens to them? If you compare them with control groups of people who uh, don't, who can't benefit from that kind of system, and this brings me to my third point. If I still have time, to yes, do it, so that will be uh, that will be short. So uh, the fourth point, uh, of course, is uh, try to evaluate what can be the impact of such a, a distinct approach uh, or of a non-distinct approach, two faces of the same uh, coin. And I would like to propose a few reflections, starting from the uh, Belgian system and uh, starting from uh, recent research, uh, follow-up research that has been made in Belgium on uh, young, not young adults, on old juveniles between 16 and 18 years old who have been transferred to the adult system. So my way of reasoning here is a bit a contrary. And I think that you can, uh, you can probably um, 
make conclusions, valuable conclusions uh, for the young adult uh, starting from what happened with those young transferred uh, juveniles uh, uh, to the adult uh, system. So, uh, to, to make things as clear as possible, I told you that Belgium, Belgium had no distinct approach for young adults. But what we have is a transfer system. A transfer system which means that the law authorizes the judges to transfer juvenile offenders age 16 or more, 16 uh, or 17 in fact, uh, to an extended youth court procedural apart system in function of the gravity of the committed act, in function of the maturity of uh, the perpetrator, in function of uh, different uh, criteria. So those uh, juveniles age 16 or more can be transferred to an extended youth court applying penal law of the adult. And if the case is really uh, harsh, they can be also transferred eventually to the Crown Court, the Cour d'Assise, I don't know if, uh, what was the name in, uh, in Portuguese, if you have that, so that's the court for uh, crimes. Justice criminal. Criminal judge. Uh, is there a criminal judge? Okay, only the only judge case is very it's high. It's really the high, yeah. yeah. Okay. We, we, we sell the code assist in Belgium is still with a jury, for example. Yes, same people same, 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 same well, So that's, a, so that's but also we, possible. Jury in Portugal, it's, it's possible, but it's a residual. Yeah, but the same in Belgium because they, uh, we have a system what we call correctionalization, which means that most of the cases are sent back to they are disqualified. Same, 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 same in Portugal. Portugal. Okay. So, but it's still formally possible. Um, so, such transfer involves all the juveniles and. Uh, uh, you have a transfer practice that exists in uh, different countries. It has been largely discussed in the uh, literature, in the international uh, literature, and international literature has most of the time been very critical against that uh, transfer uh, of uh, old juveniles towards the uh, penal system for adult and four points of uh, criticism uh, are usually uh, mentioned first point of criticism the transfer to the adult system is uh, or would be not efficient in terms of uh, prevention of recidivism so uh, with those people transfer to the adult system the uh, uh, Recidivism would be more important afterwards. Second point of criticism, uh, transfer has a contamination effect via the confrontation to adults in prison. So in fact, we have exactly the same argument, the reverse argument that those used by the international rule to favor the distinct approach. We are exactly in the same uh, theater. Um, third criticism, transfer has a negative impact on the young offender career. Uh, transfer accelerates the identification process to a deviant role. That's a classical argument of the uh, labeling uh, or interactional, interactionist uh, theory. So, uh, what's the Results or which are the results of that Belgian uh, research? That Belgian research was conducted uh, recently on 210 young offenders transferred to the adult system around uh, the years 2000. 
and that research uh, made a follow-up of those uh, young, uh, old juveniles, so I remember you, it's between 16 and 18, follow up in uh, 2015, so 15 years after. So that's already an interesting period to evaluate the impact uh, of the adult uh, criminal law on those uh, old juveniles or young adults in Portugal, they would be uh, young adults. Um, Globally speaking, the research confirm, confirms the uh, criticism uh, that you can find in the international uh, literature. First statement, recidivism. Uh, recidivism is high and reconviction rates are increasing with the years. So more uh, more reconvictions uh, 10 years after the transfer than in the two or three first year. So uh, the desistance option doesn't work. Second statement, recidivism shows a kind of specialization in the offense, uh, which means that you have a trajectory that begins at the moment and you stay in tail in your trajectory, you commit the same kind of offences. You don't change of uh, delinquency, but you stay uh, in the same kind of delinquency uh, that has justified the uh, that has justified the transfer. Third uh, statement: most of those juveniles have passed after the transfer, a consistent number of periods of time in prison. So experience of prison uh, is important. <coughs> Conclusion uh, of the research. Uh, I, I just read you the uh, general conclusion made by the researchers. The results illustrate that transferred offenders do not far well. The judicial pathway following juvenile transfer did not end there for the majority. The judicial pathway did not end there for the majority of them. A substantial part of them are still involved in the judicial system. More than half of them were convicted recently, 15 years after, and almost a third is currently residing in prison or has left prison recently. So the image, uh, the image of uh, treatment by the uh, criminal justice, criminal other justice of that category of people uh, doesn't seem very uh, benefiting for them. Of course, you can always uh, say that the, the, the interpretation of such result is uh, dubious or problematic. Mm -hmm. You could argue that the fact that transfer is followed by such pathway doesn't automatically mean that transfer is the reason or the cause of it. You have a correlation between fact and you are always confronted with that difficult problem uh, of relation between a correlation between two elements and a causal, uh, a causal explanation between both. Uh, so one might also imagine that we for transfer the trajectory of those difficult adolescents, because they are probably the most difficult cases which are transferred, would have been the same. So that, that's, that's always a, a difficult issue. Still, uh, and that's maybe for me the most interesting part of the research, uh, researchers have conducted interviews with uh, 15 youngsters of 
the sample. And this brings for me uh, interesting elements. And uh, in a paper, in the paper published on the research, the researchers quote, quote three elements that are uh, brought by those uh, young adults or old uh, juveniles. First statement that those uh, youngsters, uh, first statement that they make, they say that prison has played a pivotal role in their trajectory and transfer goes nearly always along with a prison sentence because they are transferred for uh, cases uh, which are uh, harsh cases uh, that uh, they are transferred because the juvenile judge uh, think that the options they have in the juvenile criminal system is not working so send it back to the adult and use of classical adult uh, sanction so they say that prison plays a pivotal role in their trajectory changing their view on offending and their uh, future without the term if i read some quotation i could read the idea is that with the transfer there uh, you have a kind of psychological change uh, which really means the entry in a deviant career. As if, and that's the second point they, uh, they quote, as if the transfer to the adult system signified for them the end of a, of a story and the end of a possibility to change of trajectory. So that's the way they, they speak about it. Being uh, convicted as an adult is a radical step, step, radical step, uh, which brings them, as they say, over the border mm -hmm. uh, with a self-fulfilling prophecy that begins to, to act. And then uh, the first step is the statement that uh, they don't see a change in their further uh, trajectory. Voilà, that was it. Coming up.